Hello viewers, I'm Charles. Today I'm going to show you how to export Quixel Megascans from Quixel Bridge into Houdini. But before I start that, there's something important that we need to talk about. To show you that, I've opened an incognito window in Google Chrome. The reason I'm using an incognito window is because otherwise I'll be logged into the Quixel.com website and for the purposes of doing this video, this will work better if I'm not logged in. So having said all that, let's type in Quixel.com and go to the website. And the next thing you need to do is to click on Mega Scans. This is really important. You need to get all legacy Mega Scans for free by claiming them now. Now to do this, you'll need a Quixel account or an Epic Games account. If you haven't got one of those, I would recommend signing up for the Epic Games account because you can then also acquire the same assets on fab.com. Having said that, I would strongly recommend going and claiming those assets for free. While we're talking about acquiring the Megascans assets for free, you may or may not be aware that Epic Games has set up a website called fab.com. So let's have a look at fab.com. So this is fab.com. Epic Games have merged Quixel Megascans, which they bought a few years back, and Sketchfab, which they also bought, and ArtStation. They had quite an acquisition spree. Anyway, you can claim all the assets now on fab.com. The important thing to realise here is, well, firstly, this offer to claim all for free expires at the end of 2024. I would strongly recommend that you claim the Quixel Megascans assets both on fab.com using an Epic Games account and on Quixel.com. The reason you want them on Quixel.com is at the moment fab.com doesn't give you a particularly easy way of getting the assets into Houdini, whereas if you're using Quixel Bridge and have the plugin installed, which is what I'm showing you how to do in this video, it's very simple to get the assets into Houdini. And those assets, once you've got them in Houdini, could actually make rather useful reference. So go get yourself an Epic Games account if you don't have one already. And then make sure you claim these Quixel Megascans assets for free. Now, if you're watching this after the end of 2024, I'm sure you'll still be able to get the Quixel Megascans assets. I don't know whether they'll extend the offer or not. I wonder if they may. Um, but if they don't, I'm pretty sure that some of these assets will be available for free. So I'm going to go back to Quixel.com. I'm going to click on Bridge. And now you have an option to download the latest version of Bridge. Now I have Bridge downloaded and installed already, so I'm not going to do this. But if you don't have that, then you need to download and install it. The next thing I'm going to do is to download plugin for Houdini. So I'm going to go forward slash plugins. Then I'm going to just scroll down and here you can see we have plugins for lots of DCCs and game engines, but the one we want is Houdini. So I'm going to click on the plugin version 4.6. I'm going to download it to my downloads folder by clicking save. You can see it's called 4.6 zip. I'm then going to switch my virtual desktop to File Explorer and lo and behold we have 4.6 zip. So the next thing I want to do is to extract it. Extract all. I'm going to, in Houdini terminology, dive inside 4.6. The folder that we need to address now is the MS Live link. So in Windows File Explorer, what you could do is to open a new tab. I have one ready, that one. And you need to go to your Documents folder. And there's two places your Documents folder could be. It could be at Users, your username, and then backslash Documents, or if you're using OneDrive, it may be users, username, and then OneDrive, and then documents, which is how I have it set up. Whichever one it is, you need to then drag the MS Live link into the Houdini folder, which I have open here. So that's Houdini 20.5, which is the version at the time I'm making this video. That's the first bit done. The next thing we need is if we don't have one, and I don't, is to create a packages folder. So let's do that. So new folder, and we're going to call it packages, all lowercase. We're going to dive inside. So I'm going to right click, 
I'm going to go new text document. I'm going to then rename it to mega scans. Plug in dot and then it's got to be J S O N and you should see the icon change. And you can because now this is a script. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is to open this in a text editor. I'm going to use Notepad++. You could use Visual Studio Code if you have it installed, but Notepad would do this equally well. Now we have a window which is full screen. I'm now going to paste in what I'm going to put in the description below. Now this won't work because it's not the correct path, so we need to alter it. And what we need to do is to change user to your username for me, let's Carl. Then if you're on OneDrive, you need to insert OneDrive and then two backslashes. The reason that we use two backslashes is that the path separator in Windows needs to be escaped so that the script knows that it's not going to do anything with the backslash. It's just going to treat it as a character so that it then has the whole path as a string and you can see it's a string because it's encased in double quotation marks. Once you've done all that, you can go save and you can close your text editor. Now when you open Houdini, it should have a Megascans menu. So let's open Houdini and find out. So I'm going to launch it from the launcher and it takes a little while, so I'm going to edit this out so you don't have to watch Houdini loading slowly. This looks like it's worked because we've got Megascans menu. Open the menu and I'm going to go to the plugin. I'm going to uncheck convert to rat. I don't think it's necessary to convert to rat if you're using OpenEXR, which is what I'm planning to use. This is backed up in the documentation which for Karma, which suggests using either OpenEXR or RAT. I'm going to go with unchecking list because it's just going to take up more disk space. The reasons will become clear in the next segment of this video. I'm now going to shut Houdini. I'll show you why in a minute. I'm going to leave the launcher open because I'm going to launch it again soon and I'm going to open Bridge by, well, typing Bridge. Right, so I've opened Quixel Bridge. The first thing we're going to do is to go and look at some settings. So you need to left mouse button click Edit and then Download Settings. And I've changed these already but I would highly recommend that you change all of these to JPEG plus EXR. And the reason for that is JPEGs don't take up that much space and you probably need them if you're using Unreal Engine or using Unity or any other game engine. But for Houdini, you probably want EXR because it's an uncompressed multi-layered format. So the easiest way to do this is just to download both. I don't think having the EXR and the JPEGs all that much more disk space than the JPEG alone. So that being said, the next change you need to make, let's get rid of that, is you need to go to your export settings. The export target is where you'll export to when you click the export button. So if you're changing DCC or switching to a game engine, you'll need to set this first. We're doing this for Houdini, so I've set it to Houdini. The second thing you need to do is to look at the textures because the format here will default to JPEG, which is not what you want for Houdini. You want EXR. Now I'm just going to show you the Houdini documentation then you'll understand why I uncheck the RAT option in the Megascans plugin in Houdini. So I'm going to switch back to Google Chrome and I'm going to just go through the Houdini documentation for Karma with you in terms of textures. So here's the Karma user guide for texture maps and the bit we need to look at is we need to scroll down the page a bit and we need to look at formats. So Karma supports every image format that Houdini supports along with many supported via OpenImage.io. The texture format affects performance, that's important to remember and that's why we don't want to use JPEG, and color space assumptions, which is probably another reason for not using JPEG. Then using mipmap tile textures can significantly improve performance, particularly time to first pixel. Generally it's best to stick with mipmap, that's .exr, or .rat texture files. 
So that suggests to me that we don't need to do a conversion to dot rat and that is why I've unchecked that box. Right, I'm going to open Houdini again and then we're going to see if this works. Let's go launch and again, I'm going to edit out the slow process of loading Houdini. Okay, we have a new project. I'm going to save this to my YouTube folder on my D drive. And here you can see I've got YouTube and then I'm going to go into Houdini and I'm going to call this Quixel Len Bridge underscore to underscore Houdini. Let's go accept. Let's switch back to bridge. Let's find an interesting asset. Purchased. I'm going to go to 3D assets. Let's go to historical Roman Empire and I'm going to look at pillar. Some people would call that columns. And I'm just going to click on this one which I've downloaded already so that you don't have to wait while I download it. You can see I need to get rid of the export settings, so let's get rid of it. In fact, I haven't downloaded this because I think I deleted it, so let's download it again. And I'm just sticking to the standard 4K, but you've got options to go lower or higher. You can go 2K or 8K, it depends on your project. And now when I click export, this didn't work. What I found is it doesn't work first time. You need to go mega scans, mega scans plugin, open the window, shut the window, and try again. Success. Right, spacebar H to frame it. And there you can see you've got your Roman pillar. If you look at the materials, now this is likely rather small on your screen, it's very small on my screen. If we click on textures, you can see if I just hover over, you can see that CXR. So there you have it. That's how you can get the whole Quixel Megascans library, what they now call the legacy library, for free, and how you can get that out of Quixel Bridge and into Houdini with all the textures in place ready to render. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons. That helps me to create more videos like this in the future. Have a great day.